Hi, I'm Dr. Boyce Watkins from YourBlackWorld.com, and this week we saw that uh, the guy, Tere, on MSNBC, he uh, he said some things about Mitt Romney where he used the term niggerization, which we're going to talk about what the hell that means in a minute. And and he was basically accusing President Obama, or excuse me, accusing Mitt Romney of niggerizing President Obama or engaging in the niggerization of Obama. And uh, as you can imagine, folks lost their damn minds and went crazy, and some calls were made to N- NBC executives. And next thing you know, Toure is on his hands and knees apologizing in front of the public. So I wanted to talk about this a little bit with uh, my partner in crime. Uh, she's a- a editor-in-chief at Your Black World and culturecritic.com, Miss Yvette Carnell. How you doing today, Yvette? Pretty good. How about yourself? I'm doing very well. So you, you and I haven't had a chance to really rap for a long time because you, you got that, that ghetto technology in your house. <laughs> why, you, why you gotta put me out there like that? <laughs> I'm putting you on blast. It was an audio. It was an audio issue that yeah. that I solved by guess and check. Yeah. So what you're saying, folks, is what had happened was <laughs> it was a but, problem. So, so Yvette, I, I'm really happy to get a chance to talk to you about this because so many things have happened, and I've kind of wanted to kind of get it off my chest. And I was like, okay, I need to talk to Yvette about this because I I really want your take on some of this. And so, tell me what your assessment was. Let, let's build up to uh, to our analysis on this terrain thing. So what was your perception of the sequence of events? Because you were the one that actually brought this to my attention. You were the one who wrote about it on Culture Critic. So uh, tell us the story. What happened? Well, basically, you know, there's this new MSNBC show called The Cycle. And, you know, it's supposed to be have a liberal roundtable with one conservative and one, you know, Negro who was Torre. And so they're supposed to hash out all these these issues of the day and, you know, have all these different perspectives. So they come up with, there was a point where Mitt Romney said something about Barack Obama. He said, Barack Obama needs to take, President Obama needs to take that Chicago style hatred, divisive politics back to Chicago, you know. And Torre was like, that is the niggerization of Obama. And that's what it is. And that's how he got, that's basically, you know, where that came from and what he tried to do. So I understand what he tried to do, but the problem is that Torrey is, 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 as opposed, in my view, as opposed to being a genuine thinker, you know, he's a sensationalist. So he always says stuff just to kind of, you know how, you know how there are a lot of people in media right now who say stuff to kind of get their name out there and get people talking about them, but it really doesn't add a whole lot to the conversation. That's how I feel about that. You know, at, at a certain level, everybody knows that, you know, Obama, nobody, that white people don't take Obama at his word, or far right wingers don't take Obama at his word. He says he's a Christian. They say, no, 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 nigga, you lying, you're a Muslim. He says, he says that he, you know, he's American and he believes in American exceptionalism and they say, no, 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 you're a socialist. So I understand what he was saying, but, and let me just say this last part. Here's my disappointment with Torrey. Torrey came out of like this MTV kind of, you know, being a, being a pundit of music and all this stuff. He really could have created his own space where he could have said whatever he wanted to say and nobody would have been the wiser and nobody could have shut him down. But now he's like at this place, MSNBC, where he got to get his check. So, you know, it's, it's so sad to see him all 12 seconds of this contrived apology that he can tell you he really didn't want to give because, you know, people have been making, people more powerful than him have been making calls saying that, you know, the little Negro with the Afro needs to hush. So that's kind of how I feel. That's my take on it. Mm. Well, you know, it's, it is interesting. Um, you know, you and I talked about Ture a little bit because we were trying to sort of figure out what he was thinking. And, I, you know, I've only interacted with Ture on two occasions uh, in, in terms of up close and personal. One was a uh, sort of behind the scenes interaction that led me to really become very disappointed with the fact that he came off like an arrogant prick. He really came off like this guy who really thought that he was God's gift to life and had no respect for other people. And, and, and that really bothered me, you know, and, and I remember, I remember t- telling, we, we had an intermediary that was working between us and Trey was doing some outrageous stuff and saying some things that just didn't make sense. And my first thought was like, okay, number one, who is this guy? I've never heard of him. You know, and they, the person told me that, that he'd done some important things. I said, okay, obviously he's, he's more well known than I, you know, than I am. But, you know, at the same time, I was like, look, dude, you know, this guy does not treat people with a fundamental baseline of, de- of, of decency and respect. And that, you know, that led me to say, you know, I really don't want to talk to this guy anymore. And the second time I interacted with Teray was when we were on CNN together. And I remember we they, they positioned us sep- on separate sides 
of the Tyler Perry debate, right? And my position on Tyler Perry is that I've been I've been critical of his films, but at the same time, I I have I believe in a balanced critique in terms of saying, okay, well, what is Tyler trying to do here? Whereas you know, Ture just you know really went in, and and I remember he he used again another sensationalist quote where he said that Tyler Perry films are cinematic malt liquor for the masses. Now. That quote got a lot of headlines, and it obviously works. I mean, white folks hire him for jobs and, you know, whatever, and, 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 and I don't care if they hire me. I got my own stuff. I make my own money. But at the same time, it's sort of like, you know, it, I remember I was like, wow, this guy's really searching for sound bites. Like, that's what he does. And so mm-hmm. it's like, okay, fine. You know, you're this sensationalist guy who kind of makes your career by saying outrageous things and, and getting people's attention. Okay. But... At the same time, you, you have to wonder, how does this person end up in a space where he's discussing these important, very sensitive political issues? You know, that, that, I think that's, that's kind of an issue, don't you think? Well, no, I, you, I totally understand how he ended up in this space. This is what media does. We have a black president. So they're looking for shiny black men, you know, to, to, to kind of speak and interpret. Can you interpret what this Negro president is saying? Please tell us. We need a black interpreter who is also, who is also, you know, who is also wears a nice tie and can really tell us what Negroes are thinking. After, after, after President Obama is gone, after probably, I think he'll get reelected. So after 2016, I think all of these Negroes will go away. Because because that's their claim to fame, being and being 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 enough like Obama to be an interpreter for him for white people. That's who they are. So I don't really think that there's a future for that. But I'll say too, after after I heard your debate with Torrey, and this was a while ago, and he said malt liquor for, for for the masses, I was done. I was finished with him. Because the point of the matter is, Ben, you know, Adam Sandler, Ben Stiller, these 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 white guys can make a, a bad movies. They can make they make an average of I swear about three bad movies a year. Just just bad movies. I didn't like any of them something about Mary, none of that stuff. But nobody says, oh, look at them. They're making, you know, they're, they're making past blue ribbon for the masses. You know, nobody gave that little, you know, like these are just, yeah, it, it, nobody says, nobody ever says that about them. But the thought process, you, the, the people like Tory are so quick. And this has been, uh, this has been my problem with him and, and, and a few other people. But he is so quick to just down black people. Why can't black people just enjoy just a simple, you know, a simple comedic sketch? Everything doesn't have to be complicated. Sometimes you just want Cheetos. Sometimes you don't want creme brulee, you know. So I don't understand why when we just want something that's just slapstick, basic company, comedy, nothing complicated. Oh, well, it's malt liquor for the masses, which, you know, hints to black people and Snoop Dogg with a big thing of malt liquor. But for them, it's something totally different. They can do that. They can be more human. They can enjoy more things than we can. We already can't have watermelon. We can't have fried chicken. So many things. We can't have grape soda, you know. And then it's like, why do black people like this? And then so it's, why do they like this Tyler Perry? And then here comes Torre. Well, let me tell you why the black people People like Tyler Perry. It's just malt liquor for the masses, you know. And so that's who he is. He's supposed to be explaining, you know, who we are to white people. That's his job. He's like an interpreter, but he interprets all the wrong thing, ascribes all the wrong notions and you know definitions. So I don't. I haven't. After that point, I'm, I haven't had any use for him. Well, you you brought to my attention something that Teray said uh, that, that really really concerned me in terms of making me lose a lot of respect for this guy was. Uh, something he said about Roland Martin. And Roland, just so people know, just to be clear about it, Roland is not my biggest fan. You know, Roland and I don't speak anymore uh, after he had the whole, you know, the whole thing where he made those comments that I felt were homophobic. Uh, but I will defend Roland on this because I thought that Ture was hitting way below the belt, literally and figuratively, was when, remember when they, you told me about this, they were joking about, I think Roland made a joke about how Ture's kids were going to grow up never seeing the Knicks win a championship. And Ture comes back on Twitter in public and says you're just mad because you can't have any kids, like something like that. Isn't yeah, he was he said? Well, he, he well, yeah, he, he was. Well, first of all, Roland Roland is the king of Twitter. One thing you can't take away from Roland is that he is the king of all Twitter. He tweets, I, I, he I, tweets I a lot, him, and his. I follow, <laughs> I follow Roland on Twitter for like three minutes, or maybe five minutes. I couldn't take it. He tweeted like <laughs> five minutes. Like, dude, Roland is the king of Twitter. Him is Roland is the king of the smartphone. <laughs> Roland should give classes on Twitter. He should give classes on being engaging with in the Twitter sphere. So I will give that to Roland all day. And but Roland was just he was really just kidding with Torre. And then Torre was like, "See, you brought my kids into it. And why would you bring my kids? Because uh, just, you know, just because you can't have kids." And it was just like, first of all, I didn't even know Roland didn't have kids. I guess he doesn't have kids. You know, I, you know. I, I, but but what's the big deal? Why would you bring that into a conversation about sports? 
And then they went on down the line a little bit in that little Twitter conversation. And he basically, he basically said, you know, something else that I thought was just like, wow, that's a, that's a little out of pocket. They just kept going down that, they just kept going down that road. And Roland never took it there. You could tell that, you know, Torre took it there. Torre made it personal. It was just about sports. So, you know, he's, he's kind of a snarky, kind of snobbish little thing he has going on. It's just, the, I just, I find very off putting. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I mean, and, and that's the bottom line. I mean, there, there there is some sort of weird snobbery there. There's sort of this, um, you know, buffoonery, really. Um, you know, because you don't have to be uneducated to be a buffoon. I mean, you've got educated buffoons in media where they they, they sort of become the darlings of the white liberal establishment by presenting this this odd caricature of a human being that that white liberals tend to embrace. You know, and and I think that. Uh, you know, in some ways you can understand why they choose to rape, but at the same time, I think that when you really want to talk about black politics in a meaningful way, you're going to get somebody like yourself, for example, who, you know, you, you are a student of politics. You understand the deep political issues. Uh, Dr. Wilmer Leon at, at, um, at, at Howard University, you know, he spent his, he spent 30 years studying political science at the highest levels and teaching classes on the presidency. So when you've got those sorts of options, why do you turn to a guy who made his career basically as a celebrity gossip, uh, a celebrity gossip analyst or whatever the hell he was, you know, just talking about hip hop and, and, and what celebrities are doing. I mean, that, that doesn't even make any sense. So, uh, but I mean, but it does make sense if you consider the fact that, it, you know, in many of these networks, sometimes uh, entertainment becomes, you know, the, the, the word of the day. And it, it becomes incredibly unfortunate for the black community because when you get these voices that are representing us, they become these, um, you know, these, these, these uh, dorky, distorted, unintelligent voices that are not representative of the rest of us. And I, and I think that's that's the issue I have with Trey. And then the last thing I'll say, and I'll let you get the last word, is that. You know, it, it, you know. I, I think there's another lesson to learn from sort of what happened to Torrey. You know, Torrey. Uh, you know, he he gets into the big house. He gets into Massa's house. They hook him up at MSNBC because let's be clear, MSNBC is for white people. It's not for us. It's for white liberals. If you don't fit their agenda, then you need to take your black ass to the door. And he gets in there, <laughs> and he gets to where he thinks that he has some real power. He thinks that he's somebody. And just like they do when the Republicans go, you know, when 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 Michael Steele and Herman Cain, when they get out of pocket, you know, people, you know, with the black Republicans, just like with Torrey, when they get out of pocket, when you say something that's too black or something that white people don't understand, they will boot your black ass out the door or they will break your ass down in public and embarrass you and humiliate you and make you apologize. They will say, boy, sit your ass down and you better say you're sorry. You know, and next thing you know, what does Torrey do the next day? I just want to say that I apologize. I apologize. Blah, blah, blah. No, man. <laughs> if you were going to apologize, then why did you say it in the first place? If you gonna be a man, if you're going to say something, stand by what you said. But you know why they can't do that is because if you don't, you can't stand your ground if you don't own the land on which you stand. And that's the problem that we have with many of these uh, figures in black media. No, I totally agree with you. Because here's the thing. Torrey knew what he was going to be talking about on that episode. And you can't, you can't tell me that he didn't plan, that it wasn't prescripted that he was going to say the niggerization of Obama. He had that thought out. He was saying that, okay, by saying this, by saying that Obama is hardcore and going back to Chicago, they're trying to say he's a Chicago, he's a Chicago hoodlum. So I'm going to hit him with this niggerization. And even in the, even in the back and forth, the Republican on the panel said, you know, this is our, this is crazy. You're not, you're, you're not being fair. And he was like, do you really, she was like, basically, do you really mean that? And he was like, absolutely. Well, what a difference a day makes. <laughs> he, was, he, he was absolutely sure that he meant it, and he meant to say it. And yes, yes, conservative woman, I meant to say it, and I'm going to say it again. And what? And then the next day he was like, I could have used a better word, and, you know, I, 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 I shouldn't have done that. You know, so it's just, I'm just, I'm just tired of saying it. I don't think it was a brilliant thing to say. I really think you could have used another word, too. I really think half the time you're on TV, you could use different words to kind of, you know, to, to, to really explain what you're trying to say. But okay, if you're going to do this, do it. You know, so it's it's just like, come on, come on, dude. It's, it's, just, a, it's just a joke. At, at what point, at what point, you know, black people, we're in an era of new media. At what point are you going to say, okay, I'm Tory, I have a brand, let me create my own thing instead of just having to, you know, eat my shoe every other day because I said something that, that these people at the, at the network don't like. Well, you know, it really goes back to what Malcolm was teaching us 50 years ago. He was saying that basically you're never going to have any real power if you attach your validation 
to being connected to institutions that you do not control. And you have a lot of black folks that, that they, they want these opportunities. They, they want to be on CNN. They want to be on MSNBC. And, you know, and my thing was I deliberately told Mark Lamar Hill and Roland Martin five years ago, I don't really want that. My goal is not to get a TV contract because those folks own you. When they get mad at you, they're going to lynch you and kick your ass out the door. And then you'll have nothing. And and so, you know, I take a lot of pride in what we do because it's our stuff. You know, we don't we don't reach 10 million people. We might reach 50, 70, 80,000. But that's. That's, that means something to me. And I think that for black folks, we have to understand that, that your power comes through ownership. You cannot go into another, someone else's institution and change the rules the way you want to. You can't, just like you can't move in somebody else's house and move around the furniture. They're not going to let you do that. <laughs> you know, it's their uh-huh. house. You know, and so uh-huh. the, the closest example I can think of to having an experience like Jeray, I mean, I'm not going to sit here and pretend like I, everything I've said in media has always been, uh, acceptable. I've said things, some, some things that were controversial. And I remember, Five years ago, when I made that, I made a comment about Juan Williams on Fox News, and where I referred to him as uh, Bill O'Reilly's happy little Negro, and I don't even know that, <laughs> but but I re- but it was it was a huge firestorm, you know, CNN. Uh, CNN was originally very happy that I said it, so they kept they invited me. They were calling me maybe once every two days before that, but then they started calling me twice a day because they really wanted me on there to, you know, like okay, go get them, keep saying this or whatever, or say what you want to say. But they they liked where I was coming from because I I just said what I believed. And then Fox News came back at CNN and attacked CNN for having an analyst that would use this word uh, the, or this term "happy Negro," and they defined it as being a a racist. Term and it wasn't. It, but what happened was like the white folks got nervous, just like niggerization. They don't know what to do with a term like niggerization, right? So they don't know. What to, they didn't know what to do with the term happy negro. Black people understood, but white people didn't. So what what ultimately happened was. Um, I, there was a lot of a lot of quote unquote pressure. You know, I remember that week on the O'Reilly Factor, Bill O'Reilly spent the whole week trying to get me fired. I mean, literally, they had an entire show where all they talked about was how I was. They 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 did the interrace words. They they niggerized me, right? They had they said okay, <laughs> this, this, this radical this radical professor at Syracuse is is saying these horrible things, blah, blah blah. And I remember I had a choice, right? I could either stand my ground or I could backpedal and apologize and remain humble. And you know what the difference uh, was, Yvette was. I had to ask myself, what's going to happen if these people walk away? What if what if I can no longer get on CNN? Or what if I no longer have my job at Syracuse? And, and the, divi- the defining factor was the fact that I know that I can pay my own bills without asking for a white man's permission. It doesn't mean that I hate white people or that I'm mad at them or anything like that. But it means that when you have that your own sort of space to operate in and something that is uniquely yours, you don't have to go around kowtowing and apologizing and saying, well, I really meant to say this yesterday, but now I wouldn't yeah. say such a thing. Like, how can your brain change that much in a 24-hour period? It ain't changed. Mm-hmm. You, you are kowtowing. And whenever the truth becomes the enemy, you start bending to a lie in order to make other people feel comfortable, then that's when you know that your black ass is still a slave. So the fact is that Teray might have the, the, the show and all that, and God bless him for that, but look, man, if you, if you can't stand your ground on what you say, then keep your damn mouth shut and be the good little boy that they want you to be. Yeah, That's when you when, when you're when you're when you when your rent depends on all that when when you're looking at it and the, whether it's rent and the kids tuition or whatever you got going on if everything that you have depends on someone else's opinion of you and what you say that's a problem Absolutely, absolutely. The, the, the greatest type of leverage that another man can have over you, and this is the problem for so many black folks, is, is, is when that man knows that he's the reason that your children get to eat every day. If I know that about you, then that means that whenever the situation calls for you to stand up, I'm going to tell you to sit your black ass right back down. And that's what it's mm-hmm. so, until we own things, until we own media and own our own institutions, own our own businesses and more effectively and efficiently than we do right now. We're going to always find ourselves having to stand down and tell a lie when we need to stand up and tell the truth. And that's that's what we're running into today. And it goes to the highest levels because you see Barack Obama folding into racism all the time. The poor guy, you know, but but that's the way it works. So um, thank you very mm-hmm. much, Yvette. I really appreciate no your problem. time. All right, thank you all for checking us out at yourblackworld.com and and uh, and Teray, I didn't mean to be too mean to you, but you you, you probably hate us already anyway, so so screw you too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. But um, but uh, uh, until we meet again, uh, please stay strong, be blessed, and be educated. We are gone. Peace. <laughs>